Now today we're continuing the work on our 2010 Subaru. As you can see, I've had the cylinder heads completely serviced. The cost to resurface and pressure test them, $410. Took around two days to get them back, so we're ready to rock and roll. Regarding the block, I started to clean it up. I'll show you in detail once I flip it over on how you can really clean this off. But ultimately, it's just a razor blade, some scotch pad. You can grab this pretty much anywhere. Home Depot, Lowe's, they all have them. And then we'll clean it off and uh, let's just start the build. Now the very first thing I'll be doing is rotating the engine. Although everything is clean, I want to make sure it's as spotless as possible. So rotate the engine on the stand here. I'm going to spray brake clean and then compressed air. <laughs> So again, this is just some brake clean. Now as a final step before I install the cylinder head, some brake clean, spray it on a rag, make the surface nice and clean. Do the same thing on the cylinder head itself. And then I have some assembly lube. This is really, really good stuff. We're going to install this or just place it inside the bores of the cylinders. This prevents dry starts. So make sure you grab yourself something like this as well. So I'll just squirt some in here. Really tacky stuff as you can see. Okay, and then what I'll do, one last time, clean it, let's put on the head. Now in my case, I'm using Felpro gaskets. I've used Felpro for a number of years. I've never had any issues. Everyone has their own preference when it comes to uh, Subaru head gaskets, but made in the USA, it's high quality. So that's what we're going to go with. So you have the dowels right here. Okay, make sure it sits very nicely and then carefully place the head. Okay, let me grab the cylinder head bolts. Now for this 2010 model, Subaru does not state that you have to replace the cylinder head bolts. So I'm just reusing them. If you want to replace them, by all means. Uh, I think they go for like 50 bucks for six of them. So that being said, they do make an assembly loop. ARP is one for example that you can coat the threads and the washer, the entire fastener really, with an assembly loop. Again, it's made specifically for cylinder heads. Unfortunately, my local auto parts store just did not have it in stock. So what I'll be using is engine oil, motor oil, threads, the two most important parts are the threads and the washer, but really the whole thing I'm just going to coat in oil, place it in the block, and then we're going to tighten it down in a crisscross fashion. Okay, healthy dose of engine oil. Now in case you did not make yourself a template when you remove the old fasteners, you may either have black fasteners as I have or silver fasteners. But if you have the black ones, you can see that the center bolts have an indentation and then the side bolts are just completely flat. But it's a good idea if you're doing this job, just make a little template. So I had a template here, passenger side, cylinders one and three, this is the front, this is the rear. And this is what I have for the uh, driver's side. So now we're ready to rock and roll and there's a certain sequence when it comes down to tightening these fasteners. So the sequence is top and bottom in the middle. So A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. The first in this case is 29 foot pounds. If you have a digital torque wrench, fantastic. I don't, but this will be close enough. Really nice torque wrench, by the way, around $35, $40 off Amazon. Again, I'll have links in the description box below for all the tools that we use. If you've never used one of these before, super, super simple. As you can see, you have the foot-pound rating here. I'm just going to scroll it up. Hold on, let me just do this. Okay. So right, if I did that a little too fast. So right here, you have the marking for 30 foot-pounds. 
You have a little clamp on the bottom. That's it. This is ready to go. And when it clicks, that's when you're at that designation. In this case, 30 foot-pounds. Okay. Okay, second round, same thing, except now the torque wrench is at 70 foot-pounds. If you have a digital 70.1, here we go. So now we need to loosen up the fasteners by 180 degrees in the reverse order. Okay, so we went one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going one, two, three, four, five, six. 180 degrees. Use a breaker bar for this, by the way. Don't use your torque wrench. This is a breaker bar, by the way. Again, I'll have links below, around 19 inches. Okay, 180 degrees. And then you're going to do it again, another 180 degrees. What you're really doing here, now it's fully loose. What you're really doing here is just seating the head gasket. Okay, by this point, it's completely loose. Now, if you hear any, almost sounds like sticking, clacking, that means you need to add some more engine oil on the fasteners. So now we're going to tighten the fasteners again. In this case, 7.4 foot-pounds, back in the normal procedure. Sequence, normal sequence. Next is 22 foot-pounds. Next is 44. Now, we're going to tighten them by 90 degrees. Okay, so here we go, 90 degrees. And then an additional 45 degrees. And then the final, final step is just turning the middle two fasteners by an additional 45 degrees. Okay. Okay, heads are installed. Now two things very, very quickly before we move on. Number one, the torque specs that I just showed, that's for this specific vehicle, 2010 non-turbo Impreza. Check with your vehicle, okay? It may be slightly off. Typically, if you're within the same year, it's pretty much spot on. If you have an older vehicle, it is slightly different, okay? So just find the specs for your specific vehicle. Secondly, regarding the, uh, the angles, one thing that's better, and uh, really learn from my mistake, is grab yourself like a silver sharpie, and you can mark each head bolt at the 12 o'clock position. 
Then when you have to turn it 180 degrees and 90 degrees, you have a reference point. That's really a smarter way to do it. Okay, so just learn from that. But uh, let's go ahead and install the valve covers. Again, just cleaning off the surface with the scotch pad. Now these are the spark plug tubes. These come brand new with the Felpro kit. Make sure you always use new gaskets. Okay. And the really nice thing is the Felpro valve cover gasket has all the right indentations, curves, so it fits really nicely on the valve cover. Now the fasteners for both the valve cover and the timing cover, they're very, very delicate. And what I'll use, this is an extractor socket set. Again, I'll have links for all the tools in the description box below if you need anything. The whole point here, I'm not sure if you could pick it up on camera, but the way that this is constructed, the extractor set, it just grips a lot better. So for example, with my normal Craftsman, by the way, so it's good quality, but you see, see the play there? And then you grab the extractor one, and these are inexpensive, these sets, and just grip so much better. Grab yourself an extractor set. Now the other thing I'm doing is just cleaning off the ends of these fasteners. Very, very soft wire brush. Now to tighten down the valve cover, you're going to do a sequence just like before. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F. It's only five foot pounds, you're going to do it twice. Make sure it really sits on there. I don't have a torque wrench to read such a low number. So, I'll just do it by hand. Don't make them too tight, because they will break on you. Okay, now we'll do the other side. Now, of course, now is a very good time to replace the spark plugs. NGK, use the factory specs. These aren't too old. I replaced them around a year ago, so I'm just reusing them. But again, if, uh, if you don't know when they were replaced, or it's been a number of years, go ahead and replace them. I believe, off the top of my head, I believe it's every 60,000 miles they recommend. Subaru recommends to replace them. Now at this point you really can do one of two things. You can either install the intake, connect all the sensors, or install the timing belt. I'm going to start with the intake, connect everything up, and then move over to the timing belt. So that being said, right here and right here, you're going to place brand new intake gaskets, and then place the intake on top, and we'll fasten it down. Now before I place the intake on the engine, I'm going to start at least routing where the wiring goes. In other words, all these different sensor hookups. Don't necessarily have to plug it in. I just want to get the general idea of where everything goes. These are grounding straps. That way when the intake is installed, I don't have any problems, any wires just sticking out and I don't know where they go. So fortunately, Subaru makes very good wiring and everything matches up just where it's supposed to go. Again, I don't want to plug it in just in case I have to disconnect something. This is, you see this bracket, this is for your oxygen sensors that can wait. And in the disassembly video, I just took some red paint and just marked up exactly where everything was situated. You don't need to do it, just makes it a little bit, a little bit easier when you reinstall everything. And regarding the intake, of course, make sure they clean off both ends. Throttle body goes toward the rear.
So just to give you a quick overview in case you're having some trouble hooking up everything, here's your crank sensor, you have a purge connector right here. This is probably for your oil pressure. These are your grounds I still have to install. You have two injectors, okay, great connectors. Oxygen sensor, this is the passenger side. Blue and white connector, that's your main harness. These two go together, this and this is for the throttle body. When we reinstall that, EGR. Again, fuel injectors. This is the VTEC control, that's a VTEC oil pressure. And this is the uh, camp sensor, which I still have to reinstall when we do the timing belt. And if you want to torque down the fasteners for the intake, they're 19 foot-pounds. So now we're going to install the EGR pipe and off camera I just sprayed some compressed air just to make sure that it is not clogged. And then you just have these metal plates. They're really made just to protect the fuel injectors. So this is the passenger side. So it just slips See if we can get this just like that. So once those covers are installed, again, one, two, there's one on the bottom, one on the front here, and then we can go ahead and install our ignition wires and then the timing belt. And reinstalling the coil here is easy enough. Two fasteners on top, there's another one on the bottom right here, 10 millimeter. Easy enough to reinstall just because the length of the ignition wires are just perfect. If you get confused, I'll show you very quickly. Subaru makes it super easy. So one in three is the passenger side. Okay, one in three, two and four is the driver side. So now we're installing the timing cover. This is the rear cover. And of course the camshaft sprocket. Now when it comes down to torquing this fastener, it's 58 foot-pounds. And you can use a strap wrench, like I showed uh, earlier on the removal. The reinstallation, I'm not the biggest fan of strap wrenches, so I'm going to use a tool that's made specifically, I showed this before in the past, made specifically for the sprockets it's around uh, maybe 40 bucks, but it's, it's worth every dime, this thing. So let me just tighten this down. See, makes it super, super easy. Good to go. It's awesome, we're getting close. Thank goodness, because I just want to get this done. This goes down here. Now regarding the driver's side cam here, I need to rotate it. Right here is the timing mark that we need. This has to come all the way up to this mark. So just turn it clockwise. Make sure I got the right socket here. Okay, 17 mil again. Here we go. And then on the passenger side, just you want to mark up this guy right here. This is spring loaded, so that you can just move with your hand, at least for the uh, single overhead cams. Okay. This is the hydraulic tensioner. If you have not replaced this before in the past, now is an excellent time to do so, along with all the tensioners and the bearings. In my case, this was replaced 45,000 miles ago, so I'm just going to reuse it. Still in very good shape. I need to press this pin back into its bore and then we can hold it down with a, uh, a very small, I believe this is 1 16th of an inch drill bit. Now that being said, if you have not replaced this before and you are going to do so, buy a factory Subaru part. In other words, on top here we see Japan. It's around $90 for this part. Gates does make one. 
However, it is the last time I checked, the Gates kit is made in China except for the timing belt, which is made in the USA. So that's my recommendation. You know, of course, it's your money, but go with the good stuff. Go with you uh, the quality. That's the main thing. So here in the vise, I just need to press this in. I had a little bit of trouble. I tried one sixteenth of an inch. It's really too thin. So this is. Let me double check. Five, probably sixty fourths. Yeah, five. I'm sorry, five. Yep, five sixty fourths of an inch. The other one was just really too small. Hold on. There we go. Okay. much better. So the hydraulic tensioner goes right here. I'm not going to fully tighten it down, but once everything, all the bearings are back in place, it's 30 foot-pounds. And these are 14 millimeter, by the way. So once again, the dotted line Sorry about that. Dotted line is for your oil pump. Okay, just like this. It goes under the idler, the I'm sorry, the hydraulic tensioner. This lines up just like so. Now let me grab those binder clips. Okay. This comes over here. Again, marking up with, take a look here, this goes like this, may have to just tug on it a little bit. So, oil pump lined up. This is the left hand cam, driver side is lined up. And then of course our passenger side. And now we'll install the tooth idler. So belt comes around the water pump. And what I'll do first is just line it up. You'll have to play some force on this to make it work. Then torque down to 30 foot pounds. And your last bearing is a smooth idler, which goes right here. And then the last step is just setting the hydraulic tensioner. I don't want just to yank it out, so I'm just, there we go. And this sets the pre tension. On the belt, make sure everything's lined up. And now I'm going to rotate it two full revolutions to make sure everything is in perfect working order. And this is a 22 millimeter socket. Okay, so that looks good, you just bring it over just a hair but we're right on the money. Okay, we're cool. And then finally, the timing cover. And just like the valve cover gaskets, these fasteners are not the best, so I'm using the extractor socket set that I have, just so I don't strip these out. I did clean them. And then the last step is just installing the crankshaft pulley, which we will do tomorrow morning. And 
this car will be ready to uh, rock and roll. And then the last step is just installing the crankshaft pulley. Now in my case, what I'm going to do is clean off the threads to the fastener, and then you want to coat the end with some engine oil. And I'm going to torque it down to 35 foot-pounds. Once the engine is back in the car, and everything is pretty much ready to rock and roll, then I'll fully tighten this down. It's roughly 135 foot-pounds. And then I'm going to coat this, the threads, with engine oil. And once again, this is a 22 millimeter fastener. And just to hold this in place temporarily, again, just using a strap wrench. For 35 foot-pounds, this is perfectly fine. To hold this in place at 135 foot-pounds is something else, and it's just too difficult. So that's why I'm going to wait until everything's back in the car, and I'm going to do something else, which you'll see in the next episode. Okay. So now this engine is ready to be reinstalled in the vehicle. Before I do that, I just want to do a couple of things. I started to clean off the cross member. I want to replace the power steering fluid and just check the hoses, for example, in the bottom here. I'm probably going to replace these uh, cooling lines. So now is a good time just to check everything. But the next time we see this vehicle, we'll, we will be reinstalling the engine and starting her up.